or what's it called? Was, what was it was it written in the you know in the Croatia dialect in its eternal existence? Well, obviously the the Quran. That, that's what I'm taught that the Quran exists eternally in heaven. So obviously when it was revealed, when Muhammad revealed it, um, he revealed it in his dialect. But what was the language that it was written actually? Um, Let's understand this. Everything. People think you know, how you. the Quran. Muhammad revealed this system. All these, all the things that we are now speaking and discussing. God is aware of all of these statements, right? Yeah. He's not learning something new. This is all in his knowledge. Already he knows the statements already, child. Okay? It's already in a book, you can call it. Already in a book. All there. So when you have revelation, God is aware of everything that's going to happen. So he's given this revelation as time required and it came down. But it doesn't mean that okay this somehow because we're talking about transcendence and it's a very different concept altogether. This Quran that Allah has given in God's knowledge and wisdom, you know, He's already spoken these words and even before we are created, right? But He's just transmitted this to us from heaven to this earth as things were materializing. So when the, the Quraysh spoke, and one other thing though, the Quran didn't come in the language of the Quraysh exactly as they were familiar with, or any of the Arabs. It's an Arabic language, clearly, clearly an Arabic language, but it came in a language which is totally different in its own uniqueness, in its own novelty, in its newness. And that is why the Quran challenged them. Like, how can you not believe that this is from God? If you, do you have any doubt that it's not revealed from God to his slave, his servant Muhammad? If you have doubt about it, bring something like it. Bring something like it. Why were they unable to bring something like it? Because of this unique form of delivery. It's been 1400 years yeah. like that. Yeah. Example, so, example. Even though, even though it was in Arabic, but it's not the Arabic that they were familiar with. But yet it was eloquent, yet it was beautiful, yet it was meaningful, yet it transformed their lives, changed their lives, inspired them to change the world. But it's in a different construction altogether. Yeah. In a different construction altogether. And what's amazing is they knew that this particular individual who is now bringing this Quran to them was known, not known to be a literate individual. He has not learned any of the poetries but they have learned and transmitted. They had times where they will sit and have competitions in marketplaces. Like souk, souk of Ukaz, for example. Well, they will come, you know the rap music today, right? How one rap singer says something and the other one imitates it really differently. Even this tradition continued in some of the cultures. They had these kind of things where they will create poetry on this spot and someone else will repeat back poetry in response and competitions like this. When the Quran came, it wasn't like any of the forms of their poetry. All their normal speech, all the speech of a soothsayer, all the magicians, you know, people used to say like these are the, the people who are possessed by jinn or and so this is how they speak. None of them. In its own linguistic genre, unique in its own style and its own delivery, unique in its own way of presenting the contents which are sublime, majestic. Although it wasn't well, you know, that well received when he initially you know, gave the message. When he, when he initially no, gave the They did not dispute with the message. When the message came is in, in its linguistic form, why are you burying your daughters alive? What have they done? For what crime? They did not dispute that this is something like, oh, we're doing this because of this. They knew immediately because they knew that was wrong. But they were doing this as part of their culture. It's part of their culture. So when this was when this was highlighted to them in this language, what happened? Transform them. The power of this word transformed them. Because it's coming from an individual who is known to be trustworthy, known to be reliable, known to be truthful, known to be upright. And he is saying this, God has given you this revelation, do this. They started transforming the society. What was the unique message 
that Quran brought, what was the message? Many. I mean, um, we'll have to talk about it a long time. Yeah. The unique message of the Quran yeah. is this, that you should yeah. abandon yeah. the worship of false gods that you are worshipping, not you personally, the Qurayshis, the Christians and the pagans, and return back to the one God that you should be worshipping. So it was again unique yes, to them. The Why God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, isn't it? How many God is that God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? Let's one, clarify that. One God. One God or three in one God? No, one God. Now I want you to clarify. Here, here or Israel, the Lord, your God, is one God. Okay. So this one God is not that one God the Father, one God the Son, one God the Brother, not the Brother, one God the Holy Spirit, three <laughs> God in one? <laughs> what, what's the point in there? No, no. What's the wrong? Are you saying... What's wrong in there? He's that? asking if you worship no, one God, to brother, clarify. He's asking. It's important to clarify. to clarify. No, no, no. no. What's wrong in there? Uh, um, I have to return yes. to the subject because you wanted to ask. So please clarify. Is the Father also God within the Trinity that you believe in? Of course, yes. Is the Son also God within the Trinity? Yes. So, one God the Father, one God the Holy Spirit, and one, one God plus, the Son. One plus one yeah. plus three God. Okay. So, one, so, it's not... No, three, man. Abraham, one, two, three. It's not one plus one plus... It can Sorry. be three Sorry, in can one. I can it I can be three in one. Can I just intervene? It can be can three in one. Look, question, Baba. Look, um, take him three to the side, please, and then he can three talk to you. Go, 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 uh, take it, take it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, so, one God. So, so, so obviously, can be three oh, in one. One. Yeah. obviously, if you multiply Abraham, one by one by one, zero, it will be one. zero or one. one. Brother, one second. One. It will be one. Three. Did you say one multiplied by one multiplied by one is one? One. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. Incorrect. One second. Incorrect. Oh. Try again. Oh. What is one multiplied by one multiplied by one? Is equal to one. Incorrect. Final why? try. Final try. Try again, brother. Why? I'll you tell, tell you why me. from yeah, my yes. But I'm giving you the final chance. You tell Third me. Why? Try. I'll get it wrong as well. I think try again. <laughs> okay. Before I give you the correct answer, yeah. let's rewind back. Okay. What is one squared equals to? One of the power two, one square. What is equal to if you break it down? One square is one times one. Okay. What is one cube? One cube, or one to the power three, is one. No. Can I finish? You are, Excuse me. You are going Excuse in me. algebra Excuse and me. in ge geometry Please. and in every. If that I is ask, multiplication, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that is what it leads to. Hang on. It doesn't work like sorry, that. Sorry, you don't know algebra? No. So, My sorry. friend, no. because no. you asked me to explain to you the correct answer, yeah. so allow yeah, me to explain it. Right. Must one cube, there. or one to the power three, is not one times one. You will get zero out for this if you say one cube is one times one. One cube, or one to the power three, is one times one times one. So now let's go back now. If one times one times one is equal to what? Is it one or one cube? One cube. It is not one square. It's one cube. Uh, I don't understand. Don't give me a count. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't Never, know. Mind. Never mind. Never mind. I don't understand. It's not the same. All right, man, so carry on, please. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's like saying, you're saying, what is one God times, one God the Father. We don't, we don't please, need please. to say times. You no, don't no. need you to say times. Yeah, no, you said multiply. We don't, we don't you say times. You said multiply. Yeah, you know, yeah. okay. So one God the Father multiplied by one God the Son, multiplied by one God the Holy Spirit, multiplied by one God the Brother, multiply, not your belief that anymore, multiplied by one God the Daughter, multiplied by one God the Uncle. If you multiply one, all of these gods, at the end, how many gods will you get? Uh, maybe, maybe Muslim does. No, no, no. But Christian never does the please, please. Uh, multiply by multiply listen, by, listen. by multiply. You just did it earlier on, bro. Uh, you just did it a minute ago. No, listen, listen. Uh, we don't. <laughs> if I told you this, father, son, brother, uncle, and say daughter, one times one times one times one times one. So how many gods are there? According to your logic, it's one god. How many gods do the Hindus believe in? Father, husband, wife, daughter, uncle, brother, the tree, the cow. So all of them, one times one times 360 million yeah, no, equals no, 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 no. one god. Do you believe Hindus are monotheists? Then you need to revise your mathematics then. Okay, so let's carry on. So we were talking about 
the nature of the challenge of the Quran, right? How it came in a very unique form. Let me demonstrate you with an example. It's probably easier. Um, Do you believe Jesus was God? No, but do you believe he was a messenger of God? Yeah. Allah brother, that's brother it. Your, your ideology is a Muslim, brother. That's it, man. It's not Finish. quiet. It's not quiet. It. It's not quiet. No. It's not yeah, quiet. but if you believe that Jesus is not God and he's a messenger of God, brother, you're a Muslim. <laughs> not, no, not by definition. Brother Mansour, brother Mansour. Because then you also have to accept yeah. Muhammad as, uh, well, you know, as a revealer. Okay. Um, so, the Quran has come in a way it's inimitable. What do I mean by inimitable? It cannot be imitated. So when the Quran challenges, when the Quran challenges people to bring a chapter or ten chapters or a book like answer, it's asking you bring something like the Quran, like it. With all these computers. It's not better. Not better than? If you can't bring... There's a conversation going on with no multiplication. This is what he's gonna say. No, There's no I, three. There's only two here. Brother. I'm listening and answering. Good, good, yeah. good, good. If the Quran says something, bring something like it. Then obviously, if you can't bring something like it, how can you bring something better? <laughs> That's the answer. So the Quran is inimitable. Simply put, the way it is delivered and what has been delivered. Okay. What is said and how it is said. Now, how is this objective, people may ask. I mean, how can I objectively understand and verify um, if someone wants to bring it that this is not imitable, not something that you can imitate? Because it can be a subjective beauty. People think, oh, it's because maybe it's more beautiful, but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You can say something is beautiful than the others and people will disagree with you. Okay? So it is not to do with beauty. The Quran has beauty, no doubt. But it is not beauty that makes the Quran imitable. What about eloquence? The Quran is eloquent, no doubt, no dispute. The people who are not Muslims, they will testify. So it's a matter of, not a dispute that the Quran is eloquent. But eloquent speech by itself doesn't make something divine. It doesn't make something... I wouldn't use that as evidence either, because obviously there are people who do attest to it, so it's eloquent. But at the same time, yeah. so, those that speak otherwise. Right. Now, we, we know I mentioned something about uniqueness. Yeah. People can bring something very things unique. Again, uniqueness on its own doesn't mean it's divine, right? You can bring something totally unique and... Yeah. But if you bring something totally unique and no one can imitate it, then it's interesting to explore. Why is it that I'm unable to imitate it? You know these geniuses that bring art, literature, music, poetry, in the uniqueness. Shakespeare. Oh, that's imitable. You can imitate Shakespeare. You can imitate lots of music that people have produced in their style. That's imitable, not unimitable. You can imitate. But if you bring something totally unique in such a way that you cannot imitate, then, then you have a big problem. Why is it that we are unable to imitate? Let me give you an example before I go into the literature itself, the, the text itself. An easy to understand example would be, say you are a builder and I am a builder. We want to now talk about our unique building proficiency, okay, how we can build. So you've built certain buildings, okay, I've built that building and this building and this building. And this building. See, these are what I, I did. I designed it, I built it. It's quite interesting. Then I give you a building, okay, here is my building. Inspect it. Go on, close inspection, you see what? Every brick is totally separate from every other brick. You can actually put your hand through it. They are suspended in air. There is nothing connecting this brick to the other brick. Nothing. The whole building is constructed, solid, floors, and yet there are no brick touching the other brick. So I give you my building and I say, look, still made with bricks and rods and 
sand and what have you. Same material. Can you bring something like it? If you think that I didn't get a special, you know, construction capability, would you be able to imitate it? Would you be able to make a building like mine? Would anyone would be able to imitate it, even today. Why? Because there's something special there within this uniqueness. Yeah. So here you are saying that uh, Zabur, Zabur is uh, less, Torah is less, and Anjil is less. Only the Quran is uh, superior. No, I never talked about superiority. Yeah, you. <laughs> In, in your word, you said so. That uh, I think he said unique, bro. Unique, unique brother. That's what he said. Yeah. Unique. Bring, bring something like it, and then yeah. something afterwards. Bring something so like it. Off. But he is. He is. Very well said. Oh, he is well denying said. the first revelation and uh, making uh, his revelation superior than the first one. <laughs> Absolutely Why did not. he deny yeah. the first so, revelation? If you were listening but carefully, he, yeah. he didn't deny he, it. He, he is, this is what he is saying. If you were listening at some yeah, I'm listening it. I'm listening okay. it. Okay. So what I said is the Quran came in the Arabic language and it asked the people challenge them to bring something like it if they had any doubt. So if, if, I I say, if I say, if I say, can I finish? Don't bring the, the, the whole thing, bro. I, 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 think, I think it's only fair if I continue the discussion between ourselves and I can speak to you another time because no, 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 no. But you come with interjections and you try to Sorry. This, this, um, join the flow. Um, I'm trying to establish a particular point about how the Quran is inimitable. You, you, see? you are not helping him. No. I'm trying to help. I'm helping him. That uh, you're if helping I, him either, mate. If I recite Psalm 23 here, and I ask you that you bring uh, something like uh, Psalm 30, 23, will you will you be able to uh, bring uh, like Psalm uh, 23? Will you bring, <laughs> this is the problem. Will you bring like that? Not understanding the subject is different. This is the problem. It's already there. People look yeah, at this already in Psalm. You can't look in at this thing superficial in, because in this is not a superficial yeah. matter. Yeah. This is a matter where is you have to have a scholarly input. Meaning what? Do proper research right, and understand the subject. Understand the subject. When we're talking about quantum mechanics, you're, gonna, you're not going to use, you know what, Newton's first law and second law and third law. This is well beyond that. Why don't you just listen to the whole conversation first? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening and as well as participating if you allow I would, me. I would prefer not if you allow me. If you didn't allow, to, uh, if you didn't participate because, because you are missing the see, points of the see, discussion. You, you are a, you are a, Excuse me, my friend. Diverting. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll talk to you half an hour later. Okay, thank you. So let, let me continue now. So to continue, this building, why is not imitable? Because we do not have the capacity, the capability, the power, the ability to make something like it. It's not within our hands now. It is beyond our human capacity. Okay? We are incapable of bringing some, a building like this today. I'm not sure about something in the future. I can tell you today, definitely not. But that's more what you believe. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. If I were to give you the building as an example, you would have to admit that it is beyond human capacity today. Right? Maybe for the entire building, but parts of the building probably could be. No, I'm talking about the uniqueness is in the arrangement of the building without bricks touching each other. That's the most I gave you one example out of it. I could have given you whole building. In fact, everything else, the rooms as you go in, look. The miracle side. Yeah, of it. Price, price, price. You, I, know, I know what you're saying, but to me, just to the point. Very, very point. Doctor Who. He has like a what's it called, like a post um, post box, yeah, post, post box, box. Uh, phone box, phone, phone box, box. Phone telephone box. booth, right? Yeah, phone box. You can go around it, and it's like limited in dimension. Where is that? Small. Oh, no. What happens when you go inside? It's bigger than what looks from outside, right? I don't know. I've never watched Doctor Who, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? That's right. That's okay. You watched Thundercats. That's right. We know it. That's right. I don't watch many things, you know. I'm just giving an example where people are familiar with. So basically, when you go inside, it's a totally different thing. So if I were to give you a building, likewise, you go inside a room, 
From the outside, you saw a room which is maybe in a 10 foot by 10 foot. When you go inside, it's like a stadium. This is the magnitude what we're talking about in terms of uniqueness. So I only restricted to one feature, which is how the bricks are joined together. I can give you layers upon layers upon layers upon layers in terms of the uniqueness, but this is one of them. So, we are unable, it's beyond our human capacity, to construct something like this. Because we can see it clearly, we are builders ourselves, you are a builder, as I said, these are the things you build, and you will say, you know, I don't know where you get this made from, I mean, it's impossible for me to construct anything. But you believe that for the book in its entirety, okay, no, but what is, about the individual this is, item? This is what I want to come to this book now. So when the book is given, it is taught, it is recited in the language of the Arabs, in the alphabet of the Arabs. It is no different than the Arab language they use, Alif, Ba, Ta, Tha, Jim, Ha, Kha, and so on. Same language. But these letters have been used to construct particles, words, sentences. The way it's constructed, in a way, if people were to imitate it, they were unable to. Now, how and why they were unable to? Let me give you an example. Now, this is a chapter in this is one chapter very early in its, is good, in, in its chronology very early in its chronology it's most likely from our reports the fourth chapter or surah to be revealed surah al muddathir okay the fourth for another 114 chapters or surahs and this is chronologically the fourth from the reports this is the chapter, I mean it's, it's, it's small in size now, actually you can see it spans in our Quran about two pages, okay? 56 ayat of verses people say. Ayat are not synonymous as verses, are not the same, but let's call them verses from what you understand. 56 ayat, okay? How Quran has brought this chapter within its verses, within its construction, unique? This is how it's like. Look at this. Okay, try again. Hold, hold of it. This is how it's unique. Once more. Have you looked? Only one verse which says, then he looked. From another. You looked, right? So it's nothing about this, what, that you look there. Out of all of this, every other verses or ayah has unique features. Only this is Arabs were accustomed to. This is what we're talking about uniqueness. Now let's break this down. The whole book's written on it, but I'm, I've tabulated it for comparison, easy comparison. The number of ayat, this is the goal of the Quranic ayat, to go like this. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, kum fa'andir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, and so on, right? This is full ayat. Um, half an hour is not gone yet, my friend. So, this column, right? Finishes here. These are different types of this newness. So different types of newness, okay. uniqueness, novelty. Tarakim, the construction. Tabirat, expressions. New words, new words. Old words with new meaning. <laughs> Mustalahat Islamiya, new technical terms. Lafz al Bayani, this is again eloquent expression. Isti'mal jadid lil adawat, new usage of particles. Al binal jadid lil sur, how it's the picture or the picture is provided or um, how something is presented in expressions in a picture as well. So when you say this, you're talking about in terms in comparison with um, any literature that was uh, a certain I'll, time period or? I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Iltifat. Shift. Rhetorical shift. Lughat al-Munfatih. Openness of the language. Jawami al-Kalam. Conciseness. So if you look at each of them, 
look at the number of features from each aisle. Some aisle has so many more, right? Like this particular aisle has so many. What we are comparing, we are comparing the speech of the Arabs at that time. The Quran came in this milieu or in this environment where the Arabic was spoken by Arabs in their poetry, in their statements, in their prose, and so on, right? Their speech. We can compare them. Thousands of the lines have been preserved. Arabic poetry have been preserved to us. Mu'allaqat um, of Imrul Qais, of Antara, various others. We can compare from the poetry. We can compare from also the speech of the Prophet Muhammad How he spoke from the hundreds and thousands of hadith. Forged or authentic. We can compare the speech. So we have now three things to compare. Speech of the Arabs from the pre-Islamic poetry in that time, the Quran itself, and the statements of the Prophet. When we compare, this is what we find. It is unlike how they spoke. The Quran is distinct from all of those other sources. Distinct in what way? The number out of 256 words. The new features is over 300. This is not just for this surah. If I am not mistaken, every single surah of the Quran, the newness that the Quran brings within the ayat, within the words, it exceeds the number of words within surahs. So when they found, they heard this chapter, Surah al muddathir Prophet recited from here to there, and only thing they were accustomed to is just one ayah. That's a Can you imagine the shock they had? So that's all they were used to in their own language at that's that time. Right. Everything else is different. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. In one form or the other. And this is an objective way. See, that's a miracle. Objective itself. way totally of unique. ascertaining, unique. verifying the uniqueness of the challenge of the Quran. Because it's not about beauty anymore. Okay? So it's not about someone being very genius, it's about actually showing you this is how the Quran is unique in its delivery. In some way. In its new delivery. How is this so? To give you an example of iltifat. Okay? Iltifat is a rhetorical transition. How the speech trans, um, translates or transfers from one form to the other. For example, I'm speaking about you and suddenly speaking about them and coming back to you. But you don't even notice. Yeah? This is a unique feature that is really profound within the Quran. Almost every single surah. The first chapter of Surah Fatiha that we read, so many examples within it. Okay? Even the chapter. But because we are accustomed to the Quran hearing every day, reading it every day, in Ramadan, in our you know, everyday Friday teaching prayers. and learnings, in our prayers, that we read them aloud, we have somehow been what? In a way, desensitized to this uniqueness, because it doesn't appear to us anymore like this is unique. But if we were transported back to that time, and you heard the first time, you will have a linguistic shock now. I mean, you know what to say. And this is exactly what happened to the first listeners who were best of their points. When they heard, in fact, some of them, in their shock, they died, collapsed and died. We have reports like this. People collapsed and they died. This is how it was shocking to them. Some said, This is not even the statement of any human being, because they know what the statement of human being is. So, it may be difficult for us who are not Arabic, not into literature to appreciate this, but when this is said, how the Quran brings this language into even within these new constructions uh, in its unique features, they were totally, totally taken back by surprise and say, how can I say something like this? This is surely okay. from God. Yeah. The examples that I have often given in the past that Muslims would appreciate 
in the chapter that we said about Surah Al-Fatiha, about when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we say all praises and thanks and gratitude to Allah, the Lord of the world. Let's look at the construct. The Arabs, at that time, they were familiar with Lord, or is the Lord. They're familiar with gratitude. They're familiar with the universe. But they were never familiar in their expression to start with any words of gratitude with definitive article at the beginning of a sentence, like Alhamdul. They would never say such a thing. You will find hundreds and thousands of poetry, you will not find a single instance of this usage. They would use this gratitude in the middle of a sentence with definitive article, never in the beginning. They would say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam perhaps, Lord of the world, because how many worlds are there? In their understanding, one world. The Quran said, came to them and said, Lord of all the worlds. There are many worlds. Rabbul Alameen. It is not in the imagination there are more than one world. Lord of all the worlds. Now, if somebody were to ask, bring a statement like that, how can they bring something like it? I mean, you now make me totally in, you know, silence to bring the Lord of the world the worlds. There is only one world. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin. They know what Malik is. King. Malik or Malik. Master. They know what it means. They know what Yawm means. They. They know what Deen means. Deen could be the day of reward or punishment, the day of recompense. They know that, what it means. But look at the construct. God praises and gratitude to be Allah, Lord of all the worlds, the one who is most gracious, most merciful, full of mercy, the one who is the master of the day of judgment. The Arabs which in shock like this. What? They are familiar in their life, in their expression. Then you can be a master of a house, master of a horse, master of these utensils, these things and that things, master of this land, master of this country. But never a master or owner of time. You cannot be master of time. They never heard of that. Master of the day of judgment? Someone who's a master of that day? Never. Not in their vocabulary, totally not in their expression, not in their understanding and the Im imagination. So when they heard he is master of the day of judgment, now look at the transformation they're having. So how are they going to bring something like it? This is a chapter that we are talking about this chapter, but making you understand from another chapter that Muslims read every time and they will appreciate the novelty within the language. How are they going to be able to bring something like it? It's not bringing something, it's like bringing a, something totally unique and true. Now we know there are many worlds in so many ways, right? Many, many worlds. Our Earth is not the only world. In fact, this the visual part of our world is not the only world. There could be various others. Right? Quran said 1400 years before. So world. our world is huge and vast. But the Quranic usage of this world, I mean, encompasses every possible world. World of humans, world of the jinns, world of the matter, world of the spirits. Look at the expression, Rabbul Alameen, like this expression about openness of the language. Any world that we can think of, spiritual, material, encompasses within. Multiple worlds, multiple universes encompasses. In every possible way. The language how it's chosen. The whole chapter goes on like this. It transformed from Maliki Yomiddin, then Iyaka na Abudu wa Iyaka na Stain. It jumps from Lord of the Worlds to show us, guide us to a straight path. In the Nasratul Mustaqim, but before that, we worship you only. And to you only we ask for help and assistance. Look at the transition. Suddenly it was God who is speaking about who? The Prophet is teaching this. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praises be to God, Lord of the Worlds. This teaching God, was already there. My friend, I can speak to you later. Yeah. Right? This teaching was already there. Yeah. That was what, a, what, that what, was the point what I was going to make. It's not about, remember what I said? It's not about, it's not about, it's not about, it's not about, I just told you. It's not about it's what is only said. How is it said? Yeah? When, the God, God, when the Quran says God is one, is this unique? 
It's not unique. But how is God saying these things? Oh, Mansur, brother Mansur, continue, continue. Now he's disputing that. Did Abraham believe God is one? Yes. Yes. He's not saying Prophet that, brother. Abraham, and upon all the prophets. So how it is said? So the Quran is giving us the message of guidance, but in a way, it is said, makes it inimitable and a proof for itself. Proof for itself that it is a divine source for it. So when the Quran gives you this chapter, <coughs> tells you about the Prophet, oh Prophet, go and warn, glorify and magnify your Lord. You can understand that. You can understand glorifying God. You can understand like wake up and warn others. Stand up and warn, right? But stand up to what? And warn to what? Obviously, against the practices yeah. that are going on at the time. They were, they were said all these things in in uh, in, uh, in Psalm, in Zabur. All see, these things are see, mentioned. You see? I know, but what he's what he said is, yeah. even though that some of the message has been given previously, yeah. the way that it was given in this particular time period, yes. within the Quran, very good, that's, that's what he was saying. Yes. That's, that's what it's the good to what you said. It. It. There were words that did not exist at that time, yeah. and they came. And they weren't used in that context. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So when the Quran, for example, say like Al-Fazl Jadida, there's 14 totally different words. But how does Quran bring and introduce new words? If I talk to you, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Sounds like Chinese. <laughs> what did you understand? None of it. Suppose I say I spoke to you English. You don't have a clue what I said. Yeah? If I claimed I brought these new words, new expression, new sentences, but when I said it to you, you have understood as you admitted. Zilch. None. The Quran introduced new words, they understood the meaning of it. How is that possible? Because the Quran used their language and used a different pattern of this world, a different derivatives of this world, different form of this world, which they are never ever used in their language, in their vocabulary, and it then explained the meaning. For example, the Quran. I mean, now I'm going to really bring back to the basics. The word Quran didn't exist in the vocabulary. The word ayah that I talked about, they didn't even know what an ayah was. Surah. Every single thing about the Quran, its chapter, its verses, these concepts are totally new. But the Quran introduced, it says, okay, Allah has revealed this Quran in its guidance, in which its verses, ayat, are explained in detail. If I told you, this is a book, the Quran, that God has revealed to you, you would know this Quran is a book which has been revealed. And I said, this is a book which explains, this Quran explained, you would know this Quran is a book that explains. So the Quran introduced this form of this world and explained at the same breath what it was. So the first listener, when this heard this new concept, it was an alien and Chinese to them. It was meaningful and they understood. So Quran introduced likewise expression and words and the way it is said, stylistics. We call them uslub or asali. Stylistics. Can I say something? No, you cannot now. Sorry. Um, we, we will talk later. We will sit down together on the park over there. Listen, my friend. I'm, Listen. I'm listening. No, no, why I say this is this. Because if you do not understand and appreciate this, I will sit down with you separately and go through as much detail as you need. But let me now go and finish this point off. Because clearly some of the things no, you I haven't want, understood. I want to understand. Yeah, he'll, say, said, he'll say he'll clarify for you. Friend, yeah. He'll clarify said, for you, brother. I am uh, explaining I, to you, I my friend, to, please. You are speaking. I, am I saying, want to understand also. See, please. See, I am saying, say, say, we said, will. You said it's, uh, it's clear when uh, the Quran is instructing you that go to the previous uh, scripture. To brother, understand. You, 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 you're going totally off subject, brother. No, you're totally off subject. It's not. It's you not. Are. Quran is uh, telling you to go to the previous. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. You're wrong. It does. It does. But that's your you misunderstanding. Okay. All you the prophets can, came you with the same message. Brother, 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 yeah. one second. One second. You think it does? Yeah. Uh, where does it say so? It, it, uh, uh, read in Quran. No, tell me where. Until you tell me where, I will, we continue. I will tell. I will tell. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring the Quran ahead, in English translation mm -hmm. and tell us then. Uh, yeah. Until then, we continue. So. Okay. You go ahead and read it. Let yeah, yeah, me, fine. Let okay. me bring that verse. Remember what you said. Before you start bringing, you said, the Quran said what? Go 
to the previous scripture and do what? To, to uh, understand, to and understand better. To understand better. better. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine. You've modified your statement, but still the case, you should be able to find that, right? Yeah, but I say it doesn't exist. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay, so the unique feature of the Quran, when it came to the Arabs, they realized that this is not something that they were able to produce. Now you might say, but what about today? Why are we unable to use it today? Why are we unable to produce something like it today? And this is where the miracle of the Quran becomes self-evident. In the Quran, there are more than what? More than hundreds of instances of the usage. I'll give you one example of the word can. Kana means was. Was, was. Is, was, where, right? Was. The Quran uses the word kana in a totally different way that the Arabs were familiar with, introduced its new usage, and even from after the Quran, no one uses this usage anymore. Ever. It says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا غَفُورًا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا وَكَانَ The Quran doesn't say God was all over. God was for the beginning. God was. The Quran is saying God is. So no one now says in the usage of the Kana as was, uh, as is in, in their languages. They always use Kana to be was in the past tense. They don't use, even today, even today, they don't, they don't use Kana to mean present tense. But the Quran introduced the Kana and the Arabs did not have a problem with this because the Quran introduced this new expression of the same words and particles in a way that fitted the context and they understood. They didn't say, oh, oh your God was and how is a God today or something like this. But they realized the Quran is expression is like this, we cannot imitate it. This is one example of a word, can. Other examples come on. Ma zala, la zala, zala, zala. So zala is? Zala, ma zala, ma ziltu. I remain until. No. Okay. So, technicalities, it's going to be quite difficult for you to explain. There are different expressions like this. We don't even use it today at all. Even today. So when the Quran brings all of this expressions and so on, if now we ask this gentleman in Surah, if you call it Surah, number, what did he say? Of Psalms 23. 23. Yeah. Psalms 23. Get Psalms 23 in Arabic and tell us. How many new features has it brought, like the Quran, in the way the Quran is using its stylistics? In the way. The Quran is using a particular verb, for example, in only in a particular form. It doesn't use in any other form. So if you're going to use that verb in chapter 23 of Psalms, make sure it's on that form. I think the distinction would be that what was being taught in Psalm 23 was teachings which were already understood by the Jews at that time. Yeah. So we, we are in not the, only the interested. We are not only interested in the message. The in Remember, the message. whole focus so far been two things at the same time. Parallel. One is the message that it brings, and the other is the way the message is presented. Psalm 23 that you are bringing is the message that is beautiful. I'm sure it will be beautiful to you and to various other people when you read it. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. But when I you think are... I it's uh, for you as well. I'm, I'm sure it will be if, if, if it's written in a very elegant Arabic. But when we examine the construction of this chapter, how is it like the Quran? Would you be able to bring us objectively? There you go. The number of words in Psalm 23, let's say for the sake of example, is 100. You should be able to bring more than 100 new features in Psalm 23. Unique. Because this is the pattern the Quran is setting. The rhetorical devices of features, the uniqueness, the newness, the novelties exceed the number of words. So, number one objective criteria. Secondly, the construction, the way things are put, how the particles are placed 
between the words, beginning of the words, end of the words, how the words are placed, how the words are substituted with the synonym. Can you use a word which is only appropriate to that construction? No other synonym will do. So you should be able to find out. I've heard this statement I, years and years back. I have found and I have told many people, go and tell us how this is like the Quran. Guess what? Not a single person has come and said, this is how it's like. Just an open claim. You know what? Psalm 23 is like the Quran. How? Objectively how? More than. It's more yeah, than. Yeah, not only it's same, more it's more than. Our, 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 so, our, our, so, our, our, so now, so, our, our, so we want you to tell us how is it like than. this Quran. Objectively. So read uh, uh, Surah 5 uh, verse 48. So you, in, when we are talking about the Quran being clear, he has some misunderstanding. You think the Quran says it's not clear. Go to Surah where? Surah 5 verse 48. Read, please. No, no, no. You read. read. You will demonstrate what you said. It's, it's, it's Come on, brother, read. No, read. read, read. I, I want to listen. No, brother, we don't want your opinion. Just read the verse. Read I want to listen what you're saying. I want you to read it next It's time. very interesting. Of course you can. Can we just listen to this and then? Yeah? He's, been, he's been waiting for a while to. Oh, that's right, bro. He's been in, he had his hand up quite a while, actually, respectfully. <laughs> Sure, no problem. Just to uh, finish. I don't have the full uh, verse here. Then but get the full verse and then we talk. You don't There's have the no full verse. There's no point giving me a half a verse. Half when, an hour. When he tells you that has no sent down. No, do you have the full verse? Before Quran. Do, do you have the full verse? Hold on. We, no, we, we, we need the full context. context. Get the full verse. You. No. How does that make sense? Quran, no, no, I'll give you another half an hour. Take another half an hour. I have. A, 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 if you have Quran. This is only in Arabic. <laughs> So, it's an Arabic. You want English? Verse, so get talk. the full verse. There's no point talking about half of us. If Quran is telling you that. No, no, no. no Quran hasn't told anything yet. Yeah. Yeah. You first, yeah, just first bring the verse. It's already said. That the, no, no, if not, uh, the, the, the brother, the brother, uh, brother Mansur, he's, he's. Okay, go on, please. Find the Quran. I'm, I'm sure you can yeah, find yeah, yeah. the Once you get the full brother, verse, we need the full verse. Seriously. It's important because you made a claim. You need to substantiate it. Hold the list to it. Because I'm curious. You can. Hold the list to it. Yes, please. Full verse. Right, I'm an Albanian Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Salam alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam. Um, I don't practice uh, Muslim or Christian, but I was going to ask you why is um, in Islamic states that is happening a lot of troubles, and we try we try to come here and help British government to build up the country, and we don't we don't go in Islamic countries to help them and be developed like Europe. America, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, how do, you, how do you explain that? It's an interesting question. I mean, if we start bombing the whole country, Iraq, and then we destroy them, and then we go and build them, does that sound nice? No, but why? No, no, no. Let's say we bomb whole of Iraq. Why do you bomb? Please. It, it, it has happened. It's to answer your question, brother. It, it has happened already, right? It's, 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 so, but who, who why, did? Who why, did? Why, why, who did? Why, who why, did? Why, are you? Are you? Okay. Has, has Iraq been bombed? And its infrastructure destroyed. Yeah. Right. So, should it be that we shouldn't bomb in the first place rather than saying we bomb it first and then we build it? That's true. But right. But so, we need to it? ask why it's been bombed. Why is that? All right, let's, let's skip Iraq. What's why are you skipping you? Iraq? Look, what's happening in Syria? No, no, no. And, and, and Syria. Syria and yeah, Iraq, they're all together. Us, no, no, us. Syria and Muslim. Iraq are together, right? Yeah, but it's, it's between us. It's, it's not between us anymore. I'm sorry. It's no, a no, world it's, it's problem. A, no, I'm, I'm it's not a Muslim it's problem anymore. Oh, no? Well, what's it going is, on in Syria? <laughs> it is not a Muslim problem only. It's a world problem. Do you agree or disagree? No. That's not no, I don't. I don't. Do you agree or disagree? Huh? Do you agree? It's not a world problem. What the Americans are doing there and the Russians are doing there. Why they don't know why? Why? Why the Americans are there? Why the Americans are there and the Russians? Yeah, but they don't know what problem. Why the world? It's political. It's political. It's political. Which verse are you finding? Unable. Five forty-eight. Five forty-eight. Not unwilling. Unable. Quran five forty-eight. Yeah. This this brother has mentioned it. Yeah. All right. They will not let you. It's difficult to become one. Because Nelson Mandela said, what can one person do is nothing. Nelson Mandela. So what did our prophet say? What did our prophet say? Our prophet says, Muslims do not be divided. Hold on to the rope of the Yes. So you have to bring the Muslims. What have you done? 
coming in interjecting. That is not the way how you learn things, is it? It doesn't help, bro. That's not true, is it? You're not going to get anywhere like that. What? What do you mean, what? Okay. What do you mean, what? To, to summarize, <laughs> Quranic inimitability. It's miracle. It's in the way the Quran is delivered and what it has delivered in the way it has delivered. It cannot be matched at all. Full stop. People have cried. Even that time, or even today, only to be ridiculed by themselves or their peers. Because what they've come up with the language, it was laughable. They ridicule themselves, it's not something that is not known. People have come up with something very, very laughable things. Because they're trying to use the Quranic stylistics. And using the Quranic stylistics produced the words that use laughable results. One of the examples is like this. Alfilu malfi, wa ma adra ka malfi, lahu dambul wabi, wa khutun tawi. Something like this, right? This is trying to imitate the surah. Others. Malqaria, malqaria, wa ma adra ka malqaria. Can you see? Malqaria, alfi. Malqaria, malfi. Wa ma adra ka malqaria, wa ma adra ka malfi. Elephant. What do you think the elephant is? What is the elephant? What do you think the elephant is? And then it has a uh, long tail or short, short tail? And he has a long trunk. Is this really eloquent? Is this really <laughs> profound? It's message and sublime. And this? Even a child would not appreciate this thing, you know. And you're talking about matching the Quranic message in the way it's delivered. This is what we're talking about in Imitability. It is not beauty only. It is not eloquence only, because beauty is part of it. Eloquence is part of it. It is not the message only. Message is a greater part of it. It is the way it is also said. It is the way it's constructed. It is the way it is joined together. It is the way it is molded. It is the way it is expressed. That is where the challenge of the Quran is. And this is what you have to do with Psalm 23 or Psalm 29 or whatever. Do that and then we talk. People have brought many examples and Muslims have shown, scholars have shown this chapters that you have brought, look how they are not, even to the level of eloquence of the Quran, because you can substitute this word, you can modify it, you can make it better. They've shown this. One of the chapters of Surah Al-Kawthar. In Al-Tayna Al-Kawthar, it's three lines. There was an imitation of it. Scholars have shown how no, the no, no, no. imitation itself is of a lower quality, let alone the same stylistics. That can be modified. The Muslim scholars should actually, if you modify it that way, it will be more, even more eloquent. But still, it will fall short of a Quranic chapter. So it's a culture. Can you just spin it on? How does someone like um, that? good, it doesn't really appreciate for like, for example, the brother of Zeke. I just gave you some examples about the constructions. Um, so even though the words, the expressions you're not familiar with, but when you look at it objectively, I, I tabulated it to show you how. I mean, whole page, and you turn the other page, only two words. Uh, what was known to the Arabs at that time? This is the way they could express it. find them, and everything else. That is the objective way of looking at the Quranic channels. Like the global word, isn't it? Can you just explain, you know, like, for example, in our times. You know, I like that one, brother Mansur. <laughs> open the Quran with open mind and read it. Yeah, yeah. Use that example, brother Mansur. Nice. Read it with an open mind. For example, today's age. That's that's where my um, why I'm not able to. You know, to to do it. I've read it and spiritually, not read it from its entirety, but I, I tried to read and spiritually, it, 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 it didn't agree. With, it didn't agree. With it. It didn't there agree. are many things that we may not agree with because of what we have made ourselves. For example, you might have an individual who doesn't like killing of any animal in the creation, not even a bacteria or a virus or a fungus let alone chicken and sheep and ducks and, and cows for eating, right? So when you talk about, oh, make sure they're halal to eat, for them, they don't like to eat any animals in the first place. They'll say, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it, the enemy. This is because of already preconceived bias that you built. That there will be that. There will, that will, that will that's an obstacle. That will exist. Yeah. Yeah? That will exist. So this is an example from dietary laws. That laws, for example, people 
so look, I cannot agree with how Islam says, you know, man cannot wear gold. And you like gold because it's, that's what makes you very happy. And he says, no, you can't wear gold. But you can have as much gold in heaven, for example. But this is restricted. This is how you are going to demonstrate your submission and surrender of your will willingly to your creator. Whether you're able to surrender your will, certify, I love gold, but yes, I'm going to stay away from it. Or silk. And there are people who have chains of gold. And, yeah? But that might be an obstacle to some people. But that obstacle is not real. This is an obstacle that is something that is set up, which we will say a temporal, not something that is justifiable. Why is it real, not justifiable? Oh, how can I accept the Quranic message? It's in Arabic language and I don't speak Arabic, I'm not an Arab. People say this. An obstacle, a, an excuse, not justifiable. Because the message has to come to the people in their language, in the language of the messenger, whenever it came. And if it came to the people who are Arabs, then it has to be the Arabs. You can't have an individual say, oh, by the way, I was an Arab, but here's my uh, international passport. There you go, I'm universal. You cannot bring these obstacles. Or, oh, it talks about the previous prophets and messengers. I believe that in any way. But what it does is it tells you and reminds you what went wrong. The verse that you quoted is exactly what the Quran says. That the Quran came as a criterion, as a judge between falsehood and truth of what happened in the past transmission of scripture. The Quran will testify of the truthfulness of your scripture and it will falsify the falsehood and error in the scripture. This is what the Quran says, a muhaymin a standard, a criterion. This is what the Quran is doing. Quran, earlier on, message was revealed, given as a guidance, but people changed it. And you gave some examples before how you don't agree with some of the things because there are alteration done for whatever motives people have. The Quran likewise shows how the people have changed and what they have changed. The Quran says, all people of scripture, don't exaggerate in your, what you say on your religion. Do not say Trinity or three or three in one. Does this is better for you, for your Lord, for your God, for your one. Do we say? Do we say? When the, when the uh, scripture says, scripture says, where? Three in one. Okay, brother, just one Scripture moment. says three in one. Excuse me. It's not we. Where we in saying. the Old Testament? Just now to bring you into discussion, right? Where in the entirety of the Old Testament, entirety of the New Testament, it says God is three in one? It's not, it's not. So, so Genesis uh, uh, no, no. 1, verse 2. Yeah, what is it? It is, it is clear. Yeah, what does it say? That it is clear. One? God's spirit was hovering over the water. God and spirit. You can see two entities there. While the, while, and the third, and the third entity, the one who is uh, uh, present there, is, is the one who is giving this message that God's spirit was hovering over the water. What about the water itself? Huh? The fourth entity. <laughs> fourth, water is the fourth entity. Fourth, fourth entity. Don't miss the water out. It's not entity. What, yeah. The water is present. While the spirit is hovering, the water is present. The fourth entity. Now, does the Bible in Genesis say these four are one? No. It says. Clearly it so. Says, so, it says. So, where in the entire the New Testament, I'll ask you the question second time, that the Trinity, the three in one. Three in one. There is no word Trinity in the Bible. No, three in one. So, so is the Tawheed is not in the in the Quran. Where in the entirety of the it Old and the New Testament it says three are one. So the instruction, where, where does it give that instruction? It that is the nature of God, that is three persons. There are components of a Trinity. Component. Where does it say in the scripture there are one? God and the word. 
Hmm? Spirit, God, and... Did you hear what I said? Yeah. My components question, are there. My question is not components. why it talks about the components. Yeah, components are My there. question is beyond that. Yeah. Com what is my question? Then the components are No, there. what is my question? You, you, you don't brother, 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 What is my question? Brother, to answer the question, you must know the question. See, when you, what is the question when you say ask? electricity, there, Tell are, again, brother, there are components behind uh, that electricity. If, repeat the question. Repeat the question. You haven't understood the question. That's why the question is to be repeated. Yeah. I am not asking you to demonstrate from the old and new Testament components, yeah. persons, entities, parts. Yeah. I'm simply asking you to prove your statement that there these three components yeah. are one. Where do you have a statement that the three are one? These three persons. Where, where if you three if you read uh, uh, John chapter one verse one. Mm -hmm. I have read it. It doesn't yeah. say there are three. Go are ahead. One. Go ahead, brother. What is it? It, it is uh, clearly saying that uh, the word was with God and that God... Does it clearly say that we are one in this verse? Of course, of course it is. No. Uh, which part of this verse says that? Even, even John picked, uh, picked from, uh, from so the... John 1.1, yeah. one, one. John one, yeah. one. what does it which say? Which part of John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God? But, <laughs> yes, yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> which of these statements yeah. demonstrate that the three persons are one God? I showed you uh, the first, uh, first in Genesis. In John 1.1, 1, 1, not in, in, Genesis. In, in, in Genesis. We've moved, we've moved. In Gen My friend, we've moved. In John 1.1, 1, 1, NRK and Ho Logos. In, in, in Genesis uh, 1, I was just about to talk to you two. in the Greek, right? In, in, in my funny accent, perhaps. You would not understand, right? In English, then. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John yes. 1 1, right? Yes. Did you hear? Yeah. I am saying the three persons are one God. No. That's it. My friend, we talk again. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Sure. We'll yeah. again. So as you realize, as you realize, you, you, you make claims you need, which you cannot you substantiate. Need to understand those components. It's not talking about components. Which is bringing That's what he's asking the Trinity. For Brother, that's not what he's asking, you know that, right? I'm, I'm not, I don't believe in the Trinity. Huh? I, don't, I don't believe in the Trinity. Yeah, because uh, um, many, many have, many have, many have not understood. You